Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far. The sun is beaming through my windows. I'm feeling so sunny. I wore a yellow top. It's nearly, very nearly spring and I am excited. So today I'm gonna to be trying some new makeup that I've picked up recently that I've got my mitts on or stuff that I've only kind of tried once on my channel and giving it a second go for you and I'm going to be talking about YouTubers, creators, influencers who keep f***ing up time and time again and we're going to be talking about why that might be. Let's get started. Oh we are zoomed in. This is weird for me because I'm going to have to do this makeup oh pardon you we're gonna have to do this face first as opposed to eyes first which is whew, terrifying because i've just haven't brought down my eyeshadow primer and powder so we're going to use the concealer we're using on our face which is novel isn't it to double up like that so problematic creators i wanted to talk about this because i feel like recently touch us on canvas recently there seems to have been like a few instances that i've seen about twitter twitter is like the only place i really sort of stumble upon like tea um i actually find like real like obviously silly like gossip who who fell out with who stuff um that doesn't bother me um but real actual you know tea or drama as far as like people being really hateful or horrible or you know doing terrible things to other people to their fans or just the way they speak things they've said i find it really stressful and it upsets me so i don't read a lot about it i don't investigate things like that because actually i don't in enjoy it it doesn't make me feel happy it doesn't it doesn't make me it doesn't give me joy it gives me tension and stress and anxiety so that stuff a lot of the time I don't really know the ins and outs but you cannot help but have it shoved down your throat on Twitter I find I'm actually considering coming off Twitter um, because I, I don't really get much engagement on there a lot of you guys don't seem to be on there um, so it's not really doing much for me but then there is it just seems like you just hear about all the beef on there don't you so i sometimes see little snippets on the twitter the bird app and um this is the ysl two chocolate taint creme that i reviewed recently still kind of marrying up my thoughts on it so yeah recently i feel as though i've seen just like repeat offenders when it comes to offending people repeat offenders of offending repeat offending offenders is what i've seen people who just seem to be like the same names the same names upsetting people the same names effing up the same names disappointing people or, or even surprising people um with their choices with their decisions with their behavior with their actions and it strikes me given that a lot of these people well none of these people do i know in any way personally um most of them are not people that i'm like subscribed to that i follow a lot um that i you know know much about other than like what you literally see people saying about them and when they get themselves in trouble in these instances and it's interesting to me because it just it just seems to me as like an outsider that when these same people keep doing these same exact things these same exact behaviors every single time it happens everybody is super surprised about it everybody is like kicking off all over again everybody is like dragging this person to filth again cancelling them and as much as i'm like don't really have much interest in going over every sort of detail of what every one of these people has has done or allegedly done or apparently continues to do what i do find really interesting is like the human response like the 
the response to this behavior, the behavior itself, all of that kind of stuff, actually, I do find that stuff interesting. Um, you know, that's kind of like a big area of my job that, you know, human behavior, like psychology of it, you know, like all that, all that sort of stuff, like really does interest me. So that's kind of the bit, I guess, that I am interested in and that I am intrigued by is, you know, why this happens, why these people are behaving in these ways, why people react in the way that they do, why it causes the the stir, the response that it does. That's the bit that I'm interested in that I want to talk about today. Um, so the first thing to me is I found like I've been on YouTube three years now, which is not obviously a long time in, U in YouTube terms because, you know, lots of people, especially the bigger more successful channels have been going a very, very long time and, you know, spent a lot, very long time building their audits. They've been going for like a decade now. A lot of people that I know have been going for like 10 years. So in YouTube terms, I'm still very much like a baby, but I, in that time, in those three short years, I feel as though I see a lot of like unrealistic expectations of YouTubers um, and also expectations just based really on nothing. Like, I, you know, I hear and see people saying stuff, you know, about me as well as about others. Um, you know, oh, like, someone's disappointed in you because of an opinion you have or a way that you feel about something. And I think, what is that disappointment based upon? Like, given that you have never even met this person, everything you know about them is a video they might make once a week that showed you... 15 minutes of this person's life and based on that you think you know what everything about this person like all the ways they might behave all of their like values and morals and ethical code their whole personality based on the 10 minutes of their life that week that they put on camera and I find that like really intriguing like I don't feel as though other than the youtubers that I know personally that I've made friendships with outside of YouTube I don't feel like I know any of these people from Adam like I you know I watch people that I enjoy their like camera on camera personality and I they make me laugh or they make me smile or they teach me something but I don't claim that I know anything about them to be disappointed or even really surprised by I don't know what their opinion is of cruelty free or what their opinion is of drugstore makeup or you know, whether they support one brand or another or whether they're friends with another creator or not. There are so many differing opinions on all of this stuff. Like when I see, for every comment I see of someone telling me they like hate me because I don't do drugstore or makeup reviews, um, I have 20 people saying, oh, I'm so glad you don't do drugstore because they don't use it very much either. And, you know, there are lots of other people who do drugstore, but not as many who do high end or who do more luxury makeup. So therefore I'm more useful to them. So it's just like to me, for every person saying one thing, you get someone saying another. So for every person who says, oh, you know, I wish you'd do more makeup tutorials. There are a hundred people who feel like they've seen enough makeup tutorials to last them an entire lifetime. This is the Pat McGrath powder, by the way, and I just used the Hourglass Concealer. I picked up this light shade because when I first saw it, I thought it looks white and it terrified me. So I bought the medium shade to begin with and then realized that that was like darkening up my under eyes so I switched to the light which is much better for me right now yeah so I just I find that really interesting I've had people tell me that they are disappointed in me basically because I've given them a, an opinion about something and that's been like really confusing to me because I'm like that's always been my opinion like you may not have known about it before, but that's that's me. And I feel like I'm very myself on camera. Well, all the time, but especially on camera, I feel like I'm always myself. And for someone to tell me, oh, they're disappointed because they thought I was different to the assumptions I guess they made 
it is, is very strange to me and that's what I see a lot of um, you know in talking about these these youtubers who are apparently problematic or you know keep on repeating behaviors that we don't like that are undesirable to us I see people saying all the time oh I'm so disappointed in you and I think are you though because I feel like we see this from them all the time like we've heard this a hundred times I think you know if you if someone looks like a liar and sounds like a liar and keeps lying they're probably a liar no I think it's this innate expectation or desire maybe in us as humans that anyone who's successful we want them to deserve it and I think people have like different opinions of what deserving it looks like I mean you could say someone deserves success just because they've put a lot of a lot of time in they've put a lot of time and effort in they've invested a lot of their own money they've taken risks so therefore they deserve what they've got out of those risks that they've taken whereas to other people to deserve it we want to see them be good people like in order to get good things we want you to be a good person and put good positive thoughts and be kind to people and be nice to your friends and put out um, you know good make a good difference to the world um, and I just I think everybody feels differently about what does being deserving looks like and even what being a good person looks like is completely subjective but there seems to be this expectation of creators and youtubers to be good people like we're always super shocked if someone turns out to not be a perfect person and number one I don't know anybody who's perfect like absolutely perfect 100% of the time I don't know anybody who is I'm certainly not I certainly have bad days I have days where I'm grumpy sometimes I'm on my period sometimes I'm in pain or I'm ill sometimes I'm exhausted or I'm just in a bad mood and obviously if someone is a creator in general you will only see their best self because when you turn the camera on whatever's going on with you you know you put it to one side and you try to be the best version of yourself on camera that you can i'm not going to come on here generally and be a grumpy bitch i mean i try not to be but sometimes you know you can't hide it but that's where i feel like we're placing these crazy expectations on people to never react to anything to never be grumpy to never have a bad day to never be off to never be ill or in pain or upset or offended and I see it all the time that I get you know comments where people are really critical like ripping me to shreds and I never rise to it as in like start attacking anyone back I've never you know insulted anybody or been nasty to anybody but if I just reply you know saying like like that you need to do better that is not how you behave like something like that you know I will be like oh my god I can't believe how you're speaking to me I'm just giving you my opinion and I just think really we have this like bizarre expectation that I'm like some otherworldly entity because I'm on YouTube that I'm I don't get offended or I, I don't get mad at people or I can't snap ever or I can't react to anything ever because I'm on YouTube it's like who made who made these rules up we are all very much human beings too I don't know a single youtuber ever that I haven't seen at some point get upset or annoyed or angry at a comment that's been made on their channel that's offended them I think it's very natural to do that people like handle it differently um, because we're all very very different I don't think you know there is like one personality of a youtuber every single youtuber is a different person and handles things differently I also see people being very critical when youtubers like emotions spill out onto their social media um, for example Tati Westbrook was very upset the other week because her video did really badly and I mean I think she literally said at the beginning of her rant I think it was on Instagram stories or it might have been snapchat where she was just ranting you know that her video had flopped um, and she was the first person literally the first thing I think she said was this is ridiculous like I know this is really dramatic and ridiculous um, but you know you, people get upset about things and you can't control 
how you feel about stuff and she just got on her social media and had a rant about it and I think how many like regular people do that you know will go on their Facebook and rant about a bad day they had at work and all of that but obviously the difficulty is with creators or influencers or whatever you want to call them is that their social media is also their public profile so then everyone's like oh this isn't what I said I didn't want to hear about your bad days I didn't want to hear about you know what's what the problem is I don't want to hear any negativity I came here for you to give me joy and, and cheer me up and make me happy and I don't want to hear about your problems and I saw many 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 comments about that and I've kind of got those sort of comments as well myself um, and I do try to keep it in mind I know some people do not want to hear me ranting do not want to hear any negativity but then at the same time I see a lot of comments from people from subscribers saying we want to know more about you we want to do Q&A we want to ask you personal questions I've seen many people asking Desi Perkins for example to explain her fertility journey and story doesn't get any more personal than that but if she's to complain about her job and having a bad day on YouTube, oh wait, no, we didn't want to hear that, you know? So it's very confusing because obviously there are different people with different opinions on all of this stuff. Some of our subscribers want us to be very real and open and they want to see us like struggle. <laughs> they don't want to see us struggle you know what I mean they want to see the real us they want to see our ups and downs and, and know that we're re real people who have bad days and who struggle sometimes and who cry about stupid things and who get upset about stupid things and who fall out with our friends and you know say things in the total wrong way sometimes and who just mess up and make mistakes and don't understand the situation and comment when they shouldn't have done and reply when they, they should have ignored and blocked and I think that all of this is such an unrealistic level of expectation to have on people who just happen to have like a particular job I just don't think that that is really a realistic expectation for many people and actually what I see the people who I actually see managing in some way to achieve that well are the creators who do not in any way engage with their audience the creators who are never in their comments who never reply to comments who presumably never even read their comments and that is literally the only way to do it and I know from speaking to you guys lots of you really don't want that you don't want creators never to reply to you never to like to sort of reply to comments or notice you or you know speak back and, and interact with you like and I feel like the only way people can get these things perfectly right is to do that and that's by essentially shutting everybody out and being a professional which I think a lot of people kind of have these we want you to be a total professional at all times you know you're running you are your business you're running a business that is basically you are the brand and therefore we want complete professionalism at all times but in this industry how can you be a complete professional and never show a human personal emotion and yet your whole existence on the internet and your whole being is about you as an individual and your personality etc I just feel like we're almost asking for the best of both worlds and I just think it's it's not possible you're either you can either get a consummate professional who doesn't really show much of their personality or their real life who doesn't really engage with their audience too much or you're gonna get someone who's gonna make mistakes occasionally who's gonna have a cry on snapchat or who's gonna talk about something that you wish they didn't or who's going to have a breakdown about something that you didn't want to hear about like I think we either have to let people be humans or accept that we don't get to see the human that they are because we, we can't there's very few people that we would ask to only show us their best sides yet show us all of them because that isn't really real life is it that's not that's not a real human being who's who's perfect we're all perfectly imperfect and we make mistakes and we have off days and we have bad days by the way this is the charlotte tilbury pillow talk eyeliner and it's literally changed my entire life just saying i also saw jackie Einer made a really interesting 
quote on Twitter that really hit home for me. I don't think she was claiming in any way that she made this quote up or, you know, that she was the first person ever to say this, but it was the first time I'd heard anyone say it. Um, when she said, stop expecting you from other people. And I was like, that is it. That is literally, that is this in a nutshell. I think, you know, imagine how many people, I mean, even me, like a tiny, teeny, weeniest of channels, sometimes, you know, five or 6,000 people might watch this video. And imagine how different those people are. Imagine how different those people's preferences are or who they would love me to be or what they find funny or what they find interesting and what they like and what they don't and what they know about and the products they want to use and want to see. Imagine that. And that is on the smallest of channels. Imagine that on a channel of three or four million. Imagine the different views, the different wants, the different needs, the different expectations or preferences from two, three, four million people. I mean, you are gonna be disappointing hundreds of thousands of people on a daily basis on a, on a channel that size, you know? And there's really, and it's not to say that you're even doing anything wrong, that's just, you know, the, the numbers game. And obviously there are Definitely YouTubers out there who could be better people, who are doing things that we all can agree are unacceptable, are rubbish, are crappy behaviours and we're seeing them repeated over and over and over again. But I think at the end of the day we can't continue to have these same arguments and attack these same people because they've messed up and we, maybe that is actually just who they are. You know, like if it looks like a rabbit and it smells like a rabbit and it hops like a rabbit, it's a rabbit. And we're gonna all have to accept that that is a rabbit. And we can choose to continue engaging with the rabbit or we can get a cat instead. There's loads of animals out there, guys. There's all different pets, all different pets. A pet for every person. I think as well, a lot of these large creators are super, successful slash talented slash high achievers in their field like whether or not you think you know being a youtuber is a is a, a talent or a skill or in, involves i know lots of people will say oh it's not it's not skill to be a, a youtuber or it's not a talent to be a youtuber um but i think these days there's definitely some skill in being successful at it because it's obviously a very crowded, very competitive place in order to like achieve anything or get anywhere these days. But I think in like my day job, working with Olympic athletes, working with elite athletes, there's this, always this expectation on them to be good at everything because you're an incredible athlete. So you must be also really good at organizing your life, also really good at managing relationships. You must be really amazing at admin and all those aspects of your life. You've got to be amazing at all of it because you're amazing at sport. So you should be amazing at everything, at school, at managing your life. You, you must be super amazing, especially the younger athletes who, you know, maybe 15 or 16, incredible, high achieving, mega talented athlete, more talent than you or I could ever dream of having at something. But they're still 15 or 16. Um, and we often say, you know, we shouldn't be expecting them to run their lives like grown adults or, you know, to necessarily also be amazing at school or amazing at communication or all of the other things that they have to be amazing or they're expected to be amazing at based on the fact that they're amazing at this one thing. And it's the same with YouTubers, you know, because someone has got very successful in a field or been very, very lucky or got to the top through scandal or whatever it is, they're at the very top of their field. But that doesn't mean they are a good person. That doesn't mean they're good at communicating. It does not mean that they are effective people that they are super skilled at keeping people happy, that they're never gonna say anything wrong, that they don't have some crappy, unpopular opinions, that they don't mess up, that they don't misspeak because they're a big YouTuber. I know it means we'd like that to be the truth, but a lot of the time it definitely is not the case. And I think that's a kind of unfair expectation, especially for those of, 
of them who are like still really adolescents um, and have a lot of growing up to do. By the way, I'm using the Benefit Georgia blush, which is a complete waste of time and money because it does not show up as you can probably see. I'm putting on the entire pot and I really can see like very little difference to when I started but you know I bought it so I'm going to continue to put as much of it on my face as I can to get it to slightly show up until it's all gone because what other choice do I have? The other thing I want to briefly put out there as far as what I think sometimes is going on is there are definitely people I see, definitely creators I see, who are like known for drama, who are like constantly, you know, their name is just always in every situation. Whenever there's a drama, it's like, oh, it's that person again. Does anyone ever think maybe they might be doing it on purpose? Because if we look back, especially if we look at last year, and we think about beauty drama Geddon, imagine like the the... I mean, do you remember the views on those videos? Do you remember the views on those videos? And sometimes, you know, I see stuff that didn't definitely didn't need to be tweeted, definitely didn't need to happen in any way, hairstyles that definitely did not need to be worn, and that everyone and his grandma knows you should not do, knows that that's going to upset people, yet keeps happening, doesn't it? And do you think those people are really, really stupid? These very clever, savvy business people are really that thick and nobody involved in these, these shoots or in these advertising campaigns, not one person there thought, oh, this is a bad idea. This is, people aren't gonna like this. Do you think that's the case or do you think people there were going ho ho imagine imagine the drama videos they're going to get made about this imagine how many retweets this is going to get imagine how much attention this is going to bring to this campaign oh i saw recently there was some drama involving a youtuber who regularly drops into the drama forum shall we say and i saw them uh they actually retweeted a video that had been made about them, that they were very, very upset had been made. Um, this person has millions of like followers on Twitter. The video that they retweeted at the time had like very few views, like it certainly wasn't on, the sc on their scale. It certainly did not have like even tens of thousands of views. And the person who made the video certainly did not have tens of thousands even of subscribers, um, you know, ignoring it it would have quite quickly blown over. Retweeting it to your four million followers is definitely an interesting choice, isn't it? I thought so. I saw a quote from William Shakespeare while I was thinking about this video and it goes, expectation is the root of all heartache. And I really, that really hit home for me. Expecting someone that you don't really know, that you see a very small amount of and that you enjoy and expecting that person to be like you, to have your same views and your same feelings and your same morals and ethics and beliefs and all of the above. That, that cannot possibly be. It's, it's very, very... How many, like, best friends do you have who feel the exact same way that you do on every single thing, have all the same beliefs, have all the same likes and dislikes, even when it comes to, like, food and things like that? I don't... I can't think of a single person. In fact, my best friend and I have, like, very different opinions on things. And we have really interesting, really good, like, debates and, and discussions about stuff. And we respect each other's views. But we have lots of really different views and opinions and just takes on stuff. Um, and that's kind of what makes life beautiful. And ultimately, we're going to see bits of people or actions from people that we don't like um, or that we didn't expect, and that, and that's fine. I think it's natural to have some expectations of people or just, you know, some beliefs of people that turn out not to be true. But that isn't that person's fault. 
that's who they are and maybe you didn't see that facet of them before um, because you just see them 10 minutes of their life every week. Um, it's very hard to show your whole self in those 10 minutes. You know? So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this get ready. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this little chit chat, this little musing while I tried out some new makeup. I have been really enjoying this foundation. Apparently, um, someone who works for YSL did comment on my review saying that that is not the whole shade range. There are more shades coming. This isn't officially launched until April. So I'm really hoping there are going to be more shades available for everybody by the time this officially launches sometime in the next few weeks um i'm really enjoying it it is super luminous i don't think people with oily skin should touch this i don't think they'll like it it does feel really nice and hydrating and light and it's super luminous it's not the best wearing foundation i've ever tried um but i do quite like it the georgia peach blush from benefit is a complete fail for me like i'm having to use so much and even now i'm i feel like it's like a placebo that i'm imagining i'm seeing blush and i'm i'm really not it's just it's completely useless on me the only people who this is going to work for are like the fairest of the fair i mean it's just can you even you can't even see it's there but can you see it would you know i wouldn't have thought so this Tantalise Bronzer from Marc Jacobs. I've had Tantastic for a long time. This is Tantalise, the deeper shade. Um, and this is gonna be way better for me in summer. I'll still be able to use this. I'm using it with a really light hand right now, but I love the rosier undertone of this bronzer. I think it's gorgeous. I am loving the Pat McGrath powder. Um, I've, I've taken a really long time to feed back on it because I, like I said, I picked up the wrong shade initially um so i do need to <clears throat> so i did need to just collect my thoughts having used the correct shade because it's kind of hard to think what you what you like whether you like an under eye powder when it's darkening that area because it throws you off um yeah i love the charlotte tilbury eyeshadow i'm obsessed with pillow talk eyeliner i think it's gorgeous i love just doing this little baby wing I'll show you this one because it's better than the other one <laughs> Do see what I did there. So yeah, some real wins at the moment. I'd love to know what you guys think about all this. I guess my summary on this situation, on these YouTubers who continue to F up, who continue to be in the drama, who continue to disappoint people. There's a few things. I think for a start, we as viewers and subscribers and supporters and followers and whatever else we are, I think we definitely need to do some expectation adjustment and also some understanding that everybody out there, whether they're an influencer, whether they're a creator, a YouTuber, whatever they are, we all have good and bad in us, as in good behaviours, bad behaviours. I have definitely can be grumpy and moody. I'm definitely sarcastic. Um, <laughs> I can have really great days and really bad days, like everybody can. I struggle with my health and sometimes that affects my mood. Um, you know, I certainly don't expect anybody to be 100% upbeat and happy and perfect all of the time. And I think anyone who is, is, is probably just hiding the other side from us, um, which is obviously allowed. But I think we need to adjust our expectations and remember that everybody we see and everyone we're interacting with is a human being and is capable of making mistakes and messing up or just being not the best version of themselves 100% of the time. I think it's unfair to expect any more. And on the other side, the people who we, see, who we see who are like, they're definitely messing up too much and too big and repeating the same mistakes all of the time. And at that point, I feel like we have to say, are these mistakes, are these whoopsies, are these little slip ups or are these behaviours that we're seeing all the time actually fully who that person is. They look like a rabbit, they hop like a rabbit, they're a rabbit. And move on to a cat or a dog. No judgment. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I would love to see you in the next one. Everything I use will be listed down below in case I forget to mention something, which of course I will because scatterbrain. And I would love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye 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 bye.